Tatu ba msanga na kwa I think the first thing that um, we have to be honest about is the toxicity of our politics and how this country is paying a price because of uh, the toxicity of that politics. We have had around 13 elections since uh, 1980. And if you measure period that we've had elections, we've had an average in every four years, we've had an, an election. And each one of those elections has been contested, been disputed, including the just ended harmonized election uh, on the 23rd of August, uh, 2023. The report produced by the SADC election observer mission on that election is the most damning condemnation of any election that you can see in recent uh, times. And that puts a premium on our development. That puts a premium on our attractiveness as an investment uh, destination. Most importantly, it underlines a, a, a discourse uh, of discohesion a discourse of uh, disunity, a discourse of intolerance. The new parliament was only sworn in a week ago, but as already as I'm talking to you right now, that parliament has been weakened by unconstitutional recalls of over 15 or so members of parliament. So before we have begun, an important institution such as parliament has already been paralyzed. Local authority has already been paralyzed. So we're going to reproduce the lackadaisic status quo, the indifferent status quo, the conflict status quo of 2018 to 2023, we're going to reproduce it from 2023 to 2028. With the consequent rested development of Zimbabwe, slow growth rates, 3% growth rates, 2% growth rates, negative growth rates, where we could be having a sustained growth rate of at least 9% per annum. Where we, our GDP right now is around 18 a billion uh, dollars in in 1980 our gdp was a mere uh, seven billion dollars zambia was three billion dollars kenya was uh, seven billion dollars fast track 44 years after independence kenya is a 264 billion dollar economy zimbabwe is an 18 billion dollar economy zambia is now a 64 billion dollar economy what is the difference the difference is leadership what is the difference the difference is our toxicity so we need confront the elephant in the living room which is our ugly politics our extractive uh, you know you know politics our vicious politics our predatory politics we need to address that it is true that zimbabwe is a rich country we've got 63 and of those four or five of them we have got world-class deposits world-class deposits in gold world-class deposits in platinum world-class deposits in chrome now world-class deposits in in lithium but this country is not benefiting from this mineral. I said we've got 63. There's a country a few kilometers from here called Botswana. It has got one mineral. The per income of Botswana is US 6,500. The per capita income of Zimbabwe is US 1,200. But they have one mineral, we have 63. 63 and the difference is that Botswana has managed its one monomineral transparent its agreement with the De Beers group is transparent revenue flows from De Beers is transparent we can't do that with our 63 minerals and our accumulation model is faulty if you take diamonds in Botswana they've got a huge factory outside the air airport which cleans and polishes those diamonds at a greater cost than india in india in botswana polishing diamonds is 30 us dollars in in botswana in india you can get away with 10 dollars same is in israel it's much more expensive but the botswana government forced the peers to say we will process these uh, uh, diamonds here
So the problem in Zimbabwe is that number one, we are selling these mines opaquely without any due diligence. So Manize is given, we don't know who was given uh, and on what basis. Zimplats in Ingezi was given that resources, we don't know what price they paid. I saw, I was Minister of Finance, I saw the agreement. That agreement, if it had been subjected to parliament, no parliament would have uh, uh, passed that. We have just concluded Wange 7 and 8 on energy. I looked at the agreement, 1.5 billion, uh, something that could have cost us 800 million uh, dollars. And our accumulation model is also false. Cecil John Rhodes died in 1907 or thereabouts. The accumulation model he left was that you did and you export minerals in raw form. If you were to wake up Cecil John Rhodes now from his lofty grave at Matopo, you will not get lost in Zimbabwe's production cycle because the accumulation model 120 years later is still the same. It's still extraction, extraction, extraction. I take lithium. Lithium is now the black gold. A ton of lithium cost US $80,000. So it's the most valuable mineral, much more valuable than gold. But you've got trucks, huge trucks, that are exporting raw lithium through Ford, Forbes border post to, to, to Sofala, now known as Baira. How can we allow the raw exportation of lithium from places like Bikita, when we could easily force them to build the refineries that will process the lithium so that we can use it for mobile phones, for car batteries, and for the decarbonization of our country. Thank you. Check platinum. I... Last point. Okay. Platinum. Mm. Platinum is a dangerous uh, beta because when you mine platinum, there are six other metals that come from it. Rhodium is one of them. Palladium is one of them. Now, because we don't have a refinery in Zimbabwe, what is accountable to us is a tiny fraction. They've been mining for 20 years. They've, we have failed to insist that a platinum refinery be built. We've even failed to force them to actually go and refine part of the platinum at Bindura nickel mine because there is a nickel refinery and nickel is also a, a, a metal. So we are failing this economy through opaqueness. We are failing this economy through failure to understand the value of what we are, we are dealing with. We are failing to develop this economy through failure to transform the accumulation model. And lastly, we are failing this economy through toxic contested uh, right um let me just see how can i do it here what do you want to do now? Go ahead. Uh, right. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, uh, depending uh, where you are. Um, uh, right. So this is DJ Prof. Technology is always um, a hassle to everyone. Um, I just wanted to come and say, Makadini, Makadini, Kwese, Kwese, Kwamuri. Pa change radio Zimbabwe nas unoyu urimusi we muvuro 6 November uh, 2023 uh, chida kuti timbo bati zana timbo zisana fungwa zisana kuti chijiri kuitika eh, ninyika ye Zimbabwe eh, wakumana ni wasikana taka garage wadu tiri kwa kasia na siana wame tiri mumu tefe tefe upenyu Wa mwondo tukuta mbratu mtibuta kasiana siana Pati chokwa di chaicho chaicho Ndeche kuti nika ya penza Ya penza kuwondo ngwa Ende ilu kumoru wane wakuma na newa sikana weza NPF Kandi katu wakuma na newa sikana Ndinenge ni chinyepo Pati nikati ne chembele ne hara wazi za NPF Ziri kuwomora nika shukudaru e, Manzwa That was Tendai Biti The former finance minister was speaking at the CEO Fund a, a conference in Victoria Falls 
and angash doman nemo nemo how can a country with 63 minerals and four to five of them are world class compared to Botswana with only one mineral we know Zimbabwe has got a lot of minerals some of them we don't even mention them we know Shabani mine in asbestos they are singing about our uh, you know uh, kune ma minerals akamuka kuna na manizo kokwese uko kuna na bikita minerals idzo dzo dziri kutaura dzina na lithium but you find out in nyika iri kupera nzira dzinotoenda iko ku mine kwacho kwa kuti taura unoita ngo uri uri kujamba mu makombine pambaira iri road iri kuenda kune mine what is happening with zimbabwe really what is happening i think this has to uh, make us jacked up as zimbabweans to see what really transpired with our country is it because the people who are leading the country are still having the military mind the war mind the pre-independent mind where they are thinking of war not economics what is really happening where you find that's why you find out the country our ministers you find a minister responsible for a mineral but he does not even have a knowledge or a background of anything that has to do with mining you find a minister of health who does not have any background or nothing to do with health a minister of agriculture who does not even know anything about farming so it's exactly where we are now as zimbabwean so guys ladies and gentlemen i just wanted to challenge you as zimbabweans wherever we are can we stand up and speak and our voice need to be heard this government is killing our country good night uh we'll meet again in next time in other episode i thank you i will leave you again watching uh this video in every four years we've had an, an election and each one of those elections has been contested been disputed including the just ended harmonized election uh, on the 23rd of august uh, 2023 the report produced by the sadic election observer mission on that election is the most damning condemnation of any election that you can see in recent uh, times and that puts a premium on our development that puts a premium on our attractiveness as an investment a destination most importantly it underlines a, a, a discourse uh, of discohesion a discourse of uh, disunity a discourse of intolerance the new parliament was only sworn in a week ago but as already as i'm talking to you right now that parliament has been weakened by unconstitutional recalls of over 15 or so members of parliament so before we have begun an important institution such as parliament has already been paralyzed local authority has already been paralyzed so we're going to reproduce the lackadaisic status quo the indifferent status quo the conflict status quo of 2018 to 2023 we're going to reproduce it from 2023 to 2028 with the consequent rested development of zimbabwe slow growth rates three percent growth rates two percent growth rates negative growth rates where we could be having a sustained growth rate of at least nine percent per annum where we, our gdp right now is around 18 uh, billion uh, dollars in in 1980 our gdp was a mere uh, seven billion dollars zambia was three billion dollars kenya was uh, seven billion dollars fast track 44 years after independence kenya is a 264 billion dollar economy zimbabwe is an 18 billion dollar economy zambia is now a 64 billion dollar economy what is the difference the difference is leadership what is the difference the difference is our toxicity so we need to confront the elephant in the living room which is our ugly politics our extractive uh, you know you know politics our vicious politics our predatory politics we need to address that it is true that zimbabwe is a rich country we've got 63 and of those four or five of them we have got world-class deposits world-class deposits in gold world-class deposits in platinum world-class deposits in chrome now world-class deposits in in lithium but this country is not benefiting from this mineral i said we've got 63 there's a country a few kilometers from here called Botswana. It has got one mineral. The
the income of Botswana is US 6,500. The per capita income of Zimbabwe is US 1,200. But they have one mineral, we have 63. 63. And the difference is that Botswana has managed its one monomineral transparently. Its agreement with the De Beers group is transparent. Revenue flows from De Beers is transparent. We can't do that with our 63 minerals. And our accumulation model is faulty. If you take diamonds in Botswana, they've got a huge factory outside the air airport which cleans and polishes those diamonds at a greater cost than India. In India, in Botswana, polishing diamonds is 30 US dollars. In, in, in Botswana, in India, you can get away with $10. Same is in Israel. It's much more expensive, but the Botswana government forced the peers to say, we will process these uh, uh, diamonds here. So the problem in Zimbabwe is that, number one, we are selling these mines opaquely without any due diligence. So Manize is given. We don't know who was given uh, and on what basis. Zimplats in Ingezi was given that resources. We don't know what price they paid. I saw, I was Minister of Finance. I saw the agreement. That agreement, if it had been subjected to parliament, no parliament would have uh, uh, passed that. We have just concluded Wange 7 and 8 on energy. I looked at the agreement, 1.5 billion, uh, in, something that could have cost us 800 million uh, dollars. And our accumulation model is also false. Cecil John Rhodes died in 1907 or thereabouts. The accumulation model he left was that you did and you export minerals in raw form. If you were to wake up Cecil John Rhodes now from his lofty grave at Matopo, he will not get lost in Zimbabwe's production cycle because the accumulation model 120 years later is still the same. It's still extraction, extraction, extraction. I take lithium. Lithium is now the black gold. A ton of lithium cost US $80,000. So it's the most valuable mineral, much more valuable than gold. But you've got trucks, huge trucks, that are exporting raw lithium through Ford, Forbes Border Post to, to, to Sofala, now known as Baira. How can we allow the raw exportation of lithium from places like Bikita when we could easily force them to build the refineries that will process the lithium so that we can use it for mobile phones, for car batteries, and for the decarbonization of our country. Thank you. Take and platinum. I, last point. Okay. Platinum. Mm. Platinum is a dangerous uh, beta. Because when you mine platinum, there are six other metals that come from it. Rhodium is one of them. Palladium is one of them. Now, because we don't have a refinery in Zimbabwe, what is accountable to us is a tiny fraction. They've been mining for 20 years. They've, we have failed to insist that a platinum refinery be built. We have even failed to force them to actually go and refine part of the platinum at Bindura nickel mine because there is a nickel refinery and nickel is also a, a, a metal. So we are failing this economy through opaqueness. We are failing this economy through failure to understand the value of what we are we are dealing with. We are failing to develop this economy through failure to transform the accumulation model. And lastly, we are failing this economy through toxic contestants.
Ikitawapum, ikitawapum.